Fab 3000 bomb strike on New York. Expert makes alarming conclusions about Russian plans. The Russians say they dropped a Fab 3000 M54 aerial bomb on New York in the Donetsk region. Ukrainian military expert Alexander Kovalenko commented on this news and made disappointing conclusions. Thus, the expert noted the news itself that the Russian occupiers created the UMPK for the Fab 3000 M54 was already extremely negative, but in the event of this strike, there is one important point. He recalled that New York is the southernmost populated area in the Toretsk agglomeration. And now Fab 3000 M54s are starting to fly through it, which were previously recorded only in the Lipsy and Volchansk regions. This suggests that the Su-34 with this three-ton aircraft entered from the airspace of the temporarily occupied Donetsk region. Taking into account the weight and aerodynamic features, the release of this aircraft was carried out from the near zone. At the same time, the Su-34 escaped unharmed, that is, there was no counteraction to it in this zone. Due to the lack of counteraction tools as such, notes Kovalenko. The very fact of the use of the Fab 3000 M54 in New York suggests that the Toretsk agglomeration will soon begin to be wiped off the face of the earth before the start of the Russian offensive, he notes. The command's plan is extremely clear. Apparently, the main forces south got pretty overexcited from its success to the east of the agglomeration and decided to force events. We can consider that the battle for Turetsk is beginning, and it begins with the total destruction of the agglomeration, writes Kovalenko. In March, the Russian Defense Ministry reported that three-ton Fab 3000 aerial bombs had been mass-produced in the Nizhny Novgorod region since the beginning of the year. In June, the first use of this bomb was reported. The Russians dropped it on the village of Lipsy in the Kharkov region. Earlier, Kovalenko noted, that the use of three-ton bombs by the invaders is becoming systematic and regular. In his opinion, this poses a direct threat to the defensive fortifications of Ukraine. Russian soldiers refuse to perform combat missions in Kharkiv region due to losses. Lieutenant Colonel Nazar Voloshin, spokesman for the Kortitsia Operational and Strategic Group of Troops of Ukraine, reported on the situation in the Kharkiv sector. He told about it on Espresso TV channel. Numerous cases of refusal of the enemy personnel, in particular from the assault detachment of the 153rd Tank Regiment of the 47th Tank Division of the Russian Armed Forces, to perform their tasks are observed. Because they have lost several people in their command, the Russians refuse to carry out combat missions. This is happening at the level of specific units and individual refusals. That is why they are not doing so well there. In the Vovchansk sector, Ukrainian defenders are knocking out small enemy tactical groups represented by the 150 3rd Tank Regiment of the 47th Tank Division. They were advancing in the residential area of Vovchansk, but were stopped there and pushed back, he said. The Russian forces are not giving up their attempts to conduct active hostilities. However, the defense forces of Ukraine are pushing back the enemy, Voloshin said. Russian state media and senior officials continue to say its troops are on the advance in the direction of Kharkiv. President Vladimir Putin has claimed that Russian losses were, of course, several times less than on the Ukrainian side, and the Kremlin has also gone to great lengths to ensure that accounts such as Andreev's are kept from the public. Ever since Yevgeny Prigozhin's aborted mutiny in the summer of 2023, Moscow has purged some of the leading nationalist voices who had been allowed to criticize the country's war efforts. It has jailed Igor Strelkov, a popular nationalist blogger and former FSB officer who had become a vocal critic of how the Kremlin has handled the invasion and last month authorities arrested Major General Ivan Popov, a widely respected commander in Russia who brought up problems on the battlefield, including deaths and injuries the army was suffering from Ukrainian attacks. The cohort of influential military bloggers now largely tow the government line, painting an upbeat picture of Moscow's advances while predicting Ukraine's immediate collapse. But on social media, dozens of posts have sprung up with Russians searching for their missing relatives in the Kharkiv offensive, hinting at a staggeringly high number of losses Moscow continues to suffer. Some relatives have criticized the minimal training troops reportedly received before the offensive. Despite the mass casualties, overall support for the war in Russia remains high, driven partly by non-stop state propaganda and a lack of alternative viewpoints.